we are going to do our very own Sports Talk NFL Mocked Draft. We're going to go through all 32 picks in the first round. We'll have our uh, panelists turn into general managers here on the program, and we will go through uh, each pick and kind of give a little bit of our thoughts on and maybe why people are picking who they're picking. So let's take a look at the first 10 picks here of the first round and show you who is going to select for what NFL teams as we were able to divvy it up. The Bengals will kick it off and so will Tim Reedy. And as you see the rest there, we have all been assigned to be general managers for these teams throughout the draft in the first round here. So you can follow along as we are able to make those picks. So as we get set to go here, guys, again, 30 seconds will be on the clock for you to make your picks, and then we'll talk about why you chose who you did, and uh, we will roll along through that first 10 picks here on this segment. So, number one pick, the Bengals are on the clock, and that means that our very own Tim Reedy, uh, you, sir, are ready to go, so take it away. Well, I've had months and months to pick up the, think about this selection, so uh, without further ado, with the number one pick, in the NFL Draft 2020, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, Louisiana State University. He is a franchising, changing quarterback. Cincinnati going through a lot of changes and they need their franchise quarterback, and they've got a good one. Uh, he can did not miss hardly any throws last year, guys, and he's a little bit older as well, coming into the league at 24 years old, so a bit. Uh, he's actually three years older than Kyler Murray, if you can believe it. So, <laughs> yeah, Joe Burrow, number one selection. All right, wonderful. Not not a you know surprising pick there. I think most people are anticipating the Bengals to make that pick, but thank you, Tim, for making that pick. Uh, the number two pick belongs to the Washington Redskins, and uh, one of our general managers that was going to make the selection, Mike Straub, could not be here, so I will uh, make the selection for him. So let's put the Washington Redskins on the clock with the number two pick. Uh, there's a chance that the Redskins could trade this pick if someone wants to move up and get a quarterback, but I think the, the smart move for the Redskins would be to go with one of the best athletes in the NFL draft this year and that is going to be Chase Young from Ohio State. So, with the number two pick in the Sports Talk mock draft here that we're doing, the Redskins select Chase Young from Ohio State. 6'4", 265 pounds, just a monster off of the edge uh, for Ohio State this year, and one of the most dominant players in college football this past season. So I think the Redskins add another uh, great piece to their defensive line, try to strengthen that defense in a league where they have to go against the Cowboys and the Eagles and even the New York Giants who are improving their offensive uh, weapons as well. So I think a good selection there for the Redskins, and uh, that is exactly who Mike Straub said that he would have taken should he been here for this pick. So... Number two is off the board. Number three goes to the Detroit Lions, and that will be Eric May making the selection for them. So number three on the clock here is the Detroit Lions. Eric, take it away. Well, and so many times you hear teams say, all right, address a need or take the best player uh, available. Well, the Lions had the worst pass defense in the league last year, uh, dead last in a number of categories. So you look at it, okay, is it the defensive line not getting pressure? Is it the linebackers not covering the middle? Is it the secondary? Uh, I think the fact that if you've got a shutdown corner, he can make up for a lot, and I think that's where the Detroit Lions are going to uh, address their focus. So with the third pick in the 2020 NFL Blue Ridge 11 mock draft, the Detroit Lions select Jeff Okuda, defensive back out of the Ohio State University. That's two, two Ohio State players right wow. in the top three there. How about that? And also, technically, Joe Burrow did play for Ohio State at one point. In yes, college. he did. So that's three players, one, two, three, for Ohio State. So, all right, we'll put Jeff Okuda on the board for the Lions, which means we move on to the number four pick, the New York Giants. And uh, that pick goes to Tim Reedy. So number four on the clock here. Tim, you are up. The Giants need a lot of help. They could use it on the defensive end, either by a good defensive edge rusher or a linebacker. However, guys, I'm going to select an offensive line. Then I think when you got a young Daniel Jones, you've got an explosive running back in Barkley. Uh, they've got a couple of good wide receivers, but they've got to protect 
Daniel Jones. And with that, I'm going to have a surprise pick. I'm going with an offensive lineman, but I'm going with 6'5", 320-pound Iowa Tristan Wirfs. So with the number four pick, the New York Giants select Tristan Wirfs of the University of Iowa. Hmm. Okay. Well, not a, not a bad pick. I think a, a offensive line there is a good way. Now, there are a few offensive linemen, so we'll see on Thursday who decides to go with, you know, who goes with who. So, number four off the board, the Giants go offensive line. That means the number five pick is now up for the, the Miami Dolphins, and uh, that is a very talked-about pick uh, in this draft early on because people don't really know what's going to happen. So, number five on the clock would be me for the Miami Dolphins. And um, I think it, it was interesting. Miami was talking about, uh, or potentially under the radar, was tanking for Tua Tagovailoa. And now they have a chance here to take Tua as the quarterback. And uh, I know it's down between Tua and, and Justin Herbert from Oregon. And, and maybe you couldn't miss either way. But for me, if I was the Dolphins and I wanted to go with a, a, a generational player, I'm picking Tua. So. With the number five pick, the Dolphins select Tua Tagovailoa, quarterback from Alabama. And uh, I think they find their uh, franchise quarterback for the next five plus years, five to ten years here, depending on if they can extend that contract. And I think, you know, barring any injury concerns, I think he does a good job for them. So number five pick for them goes with Tua. So... That's five picks in. Number six is the Chargers. The LA Chargers now seeing a quarterback go off the board right in front of them. And obviously, Phillip Rivers just left uh, to go elsewhere to the Colts. So with the number six pick on the, on the clock now, that would go over to Eric May. So Eric, you're up with the Chargers number six pick. Well, and I think the Chargers were going to kind of do a wait and see as to what Miami was going to do with that pick. But uh, now that Tua is off the board, I think it's... Uh, pretty well set in stone that the Chargers are going to try and find their franchise quarterback. And uh, they just had to look up to the uh, West coast, up to Oregon and uh, find their man in, in uh, Justin Herbert, big kid, strong arm is, is going to need some things to work on obviously. But uh, I think that with a year under his belt in the NFL, that uh, he is going to do good things for the Chargers in those snappy new uniforms too. Did you happen to see those? I think they look great. Uh, kind of old school. And I like that. Uh, so with the sixth pick, the Los Angeles slash San Diego Chargers uh, select Justin Herbert quarterback out of the University of Oregon. All right. So six picks in three quarterbacks off the board already. I think uh, most people at least anticipating two, but now three are off the board. So, that means the Panthers are now on the clock. They have the number seven pick in the uh, NFL draft this season, and that one falls to Tim Reedy. So, Tim, you are on the clock here with number seven in our draft. Uh, take it away. Well, the Panthers got a new head coach. They have a new quarterback. They got a star running back. So they got their offense sort of set. I'm going to go to the defensive uh, side, guys. They can go with a good corner. Um, they can go with uh, an inside linebacker. But I tell you what, if this person goes down to number seven uh, on Thursday night, the Panthers are going to be licking their chops. They're going to be going with Isaiah Simmons, uh, the all-everything linebacker from the Clemson Tigers. So with the number seven pick for the Carolina Panthers, they select Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson linebacker one of the most versatile players in this draft, guys, and he can play a lot of positions. Very speedy uh, linebacker slash utility defensive player there, depending on where Carolina chooses to play him. And, uh, boy, he ran one of the fastest 40 times. It was eye-popping for a defensive player. And so number seven there to the Panthers. Next up in the top ten, it is the Arizona Cardinals at number eight. That will be me on the clock for that one. So uh, we'll start the clock in Arizona here. You know, they've got some offensive weapons in Kyler Murray, just traded for DeAndre Hopkins. And um, I think they need to kind of worry a little bit about protecting and giving some time to use these offensive weapons. So I think the smart move here is to pick one of those many good offensive linemen early on here in the draft. And uh, since Werfs went off the board, I don't think it makes it very tough. 
and they're going to go with uh, another gentleman from Alabama. So with the eighth pick in the draft, the Arizona Cardinals will select uh, Jedrick Wills from Alabama offensive lineman, and I think they will solidify uh, that offensive line for Kyler Murray there and uh, have a nice rock-solid piece for the next few years. So Jedrick Wills off the board, um, and I guess it's going to be a question now, you know, was that the right pick? Do you guys have any thoughts on potentially uh, what the Cardinals, you know, should they go offensive line there, Eric, or do you think there's an, you know, add somebody else here from the defense? Well, and I think anytime you've got a young quarterback, uh, you know, you definitely need to make sure that uh, you have the, the guys up front to protect them. Because uh, let's face it, with, with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins and you already have Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Murray threw the ball a lot last year. I think they're going to throw the ball even more so this year. But I think in addition to that, I, I think Cardinals are going to have to think about uh, a run game too, uh, try and balance it out. But, you know, it all starts up front. Okay. Well, let's move on to the number nine pick here in the draft as we head close to the end of the top ten. And that's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I'll pick that again here for us. So let's start the 30-second clock. And Jacksonville uh, needs some help on defense. They've got a couple different options they could go. They could go in the secondary with a cornerback or they could go defensive line. And I think if this player drops to the number nine spot, then it's going to be kind of a no-brainer for Jacksonville. And uh, that's going to be the defensive tackle from Auburn. So with the number nine pick in the draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars will select Derek Brown, defensive tackle and a monster from Auburn. And uh, I think a very interesting pick that he slid nine spots here, but there's so many great athletes uh, in this top 10. So at number nine, uh, defensive lineman off the board. So that brings us to number 10 here. And the 10th spot is going to go to the Cleveland Browns. So that puts Eric May on the clock. And uh, Eric, this is your hometown Browns. So you are on the clock, sir. <laughs> Yo, there you go. Okay. You're ready to go. Take I'm it away. Roll. Take it away. I, it, you know, when, when, when Tim had the Giants take in Tristan Wirfs, I was like, uh-oh, where's this going to go? Um, but I, I think it all kind of worked out now for, for the Browns. Obviously, a glaring need is a starting left tackle. They need help in the secondary as well. But I don't think you can pass up on um, what I'm hoping will be the starting left tackle for years to come. And a guy that blocked for Nick Chubb at the University of Georgia, and that is Andrew Thomas. He's already a left tackle, which is nice. Everybody else was a right tackle, which I think, you know, when you get to the NFL, you can make that adjustment. It's going to take some work, but at least with Thomas, he's a pure left tackle, and the fact that you can get him in there and get working right away, be a starting tackle for the future, I'm excited. I'm glad he fell to number 10. So with the number 10 pick, the Cleveland Browns will select Andrew Thomas, left tackle, University of Georgia. And there you have it. Three offensive linemen off the board in the first round as the Browns go trying to solidify their offensive line. And that is our top 10 here in our Sports Talk NFL mock draft.